What's going on everyone, it's Daniel with DB Studios and today I'm going to talk to each of you about a really cool plugin for Lumion called Lumion Live Sync. So some of you probably heard of it, but some of you may not be too familiar with it, so I'm going to explain what it is. Lumion Live Sync is a plugin which goes for various programs such as Rhino, Revit, Archicad, AutoCAD even surprisingly now, and some other programs where it allows you to seamlessly transfer your model in those programs over to Lumion. And while you have the program in Lumion, you can also edit the program in Rhino or whatever program you're using. Edits will show up live on Lumion simultaneously. If you have a certain view of the model on the base program, for example, Rhino, and you want that view on Lumion, all you have to do is change the view on Rhino and it's going to automatically update on Lumion. So it's a great way to make changes to your model and have it update simultaneously. If you do it the standard way, which is you import your model, you bring it to Lumion, you add a bunch of materials to it, and then you look at it and say, oh shoot, I forgot something, I made a mistake, you have to start all over. So Lumion Live Sync is a great way to just seamlessly make changes between the two program and work between the two program really well in order to make sure that there is some sort of I guess continuity between the changes you're making and the changes that's being made in the rendering model in Lumion. This is a model I've done uh, about a year and a half, almost two years ago, right? And I'm going to use this model that I've made as an example to demonstrate to you all how you can begin to use Live Sync in order to work between the two programs. So I'm using Rhino, of course, as my example. And if you want to know how to get Lumion Live Sync, it's free for both students and professionals as long as you have the program. All you have to do is type in Lumion Live Sync into your browser and you hit download and you'll be able to download it from there. And installing it is pretty easy as well. So once you have your model opened in your project, all you really have to do is hit this play button. This play button will begin the live sync between your program and Lumion. So first things first, I have to preface this by saying when you're importing a model from Rhino or any program to Lumion, make sure you have everything on different layers. What do I mean by this? For example, I have this green area, I want to make it my grass, right? This area is my walls, I want it to be a different material than the glass. If I have all my materials on one layer and I don't specify a material for it in the material browser over here, then Lumion is going to read everything as one layer. So let me just give a further emphasis on this. So it's not necessarily just having your object on different layer. You need to specify different materials for each of those layers. It doesn't matter what the material is because we're not using this program to render. We're using Lumion to render. But what it helps Lumion to do is to identify that each of these things are distinct objects. So make sure you apply a material, make sure the material is not the same. It could be t plaster, 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 and different shades of plaster. That way Lumion will read everything as its own an individual layer. So it, once you do that, then you can hit the play button and hit start live sync. And you need Lumion 8.3 or newer in order to run live sync. Because before this version, live sync was not available for this program. Prompt you saying, would you like to start Lumion now? And you hit yes. Give it a while to load. <clears throat> so here we go. As we load it into Lumion, now we have some options as to load maybe a previous scene that we had when we were making this project and i do have one this is actually a rendering i produced with this project it's not that great but you know it got the job done and we're not going to do that i want to show you how to start a new project with that with the model you're loading in so we're going to hit new project and you can pick whether you want a white space or whatever uh, some type of blank environment a standard environment i'm just going to pick the planes And now it's going to integrate your model into this template. So looking here, over there, that's 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 our that's our model. If you hold shift while hitting the arrow keys to move forward, or even the scroll wheel, you can move faster in order to get to where you want to faster. And I have the quality a little bit lower on my computer. 
Um, in case you don't know how to change the quality, all you have to do is go here on settings and you can change the editor's resolution. Once again, the editor's resolution does not affect the final output of your project, but all that it does is that it makes it easier for you to move through the project without everything lagging. This tutorial won't be so much as to how to use a program. I actually made a tutorial talking about it, how to use Lumion, and you can see the video in the card in the screen. I recommend watching this video first before watching this one because I'm not going to really cover how to use the controls, all these things, but I'm just going to introduce to you all how to use Live Sync in this program. So we're going to just pan around, pan around, pan around, pan around, and now right click to orbit, hit E on our keyboard, bring ourselves down, right? And this is similar to the view and that rendering that you saw. And now this is what I meant. You see, everything has a different color. And the reason for that is that there's a distinct material applied for everything. You see, all the buildings have the same material. That's why everything is highlighted together. This is why it's important to change the material beforehand before you import it into the project. So what we're going to do is I'm going to minimize this tab so we can get the Rhino tab up. Let's change the size of this. I actually have two monitors, but because you won't, I can't share both screens at once, or at least I'm not too sure how to, I'm going to just split the screen between the programs just like this. But it's better to use two monitors. And you see here, you see as I move it in Rhino, it updates in Lumion, which is really, really nice. So before Lumion 11, which allows orthographic views, the only way to actually get top view, uh, elevation views, and all these different views is by actually using Live Sync with your program. For example, if I go here, click on top view, this is going to update and go to the top view as well. Seems to be a little bit glitchy for me. It's not reading, it stops reading over here. That's one of the problems I have with uh, Lumion Live Sync. It tends to glitch a little bit more than I'd like. And going back to the inf interface for Rhino, this shows that your sync is on and that is working. And here is where you have the, where you can stop your live sync if you want. But moving through here, odd. Of course it happens when I'm trying to record this. But here you can actually begin to get certain views from your Rhino model and have it translate over here. So if we go on set view and let's set the view to a perspective view and we can even get a view just like that in that particular angle. Because otherwise, it's a little hard to calibrate it in such a way in Lumion in order to get the exact view that you want. So even if I was to, for example, delete this, it deletes over here, you see? So any changes that I make, it updates real time in the model. Just know this, if you change the material for anything in the program and you delete it on the Rhino model and you add it again, you're going to have to re-add the material to Lumion as well. So just keep that in mind. Of course, you can move independently in Lumion outside of this program. So let's say you have your correct view, but you want to pan a little bit more. You can click back on the Lumion tab and shift over just like that. So let's actually start adding a little bit materials to this. Let's go here to our material tab. Let's select this. And I'm not going to do exactly what I had in that rendering because I did spend a little bit of time on that. But let's choose uh, a material and just begin to create some distinctions. Let's have that. It's paneled. Nice. This, I feel like it should be some sort of dark wood. So let's click on the wood category. Something dark. Yeah, that looks good. The roof. We can go with this just for the sake of this example. And you can begin to add other things such as grass. I like using 3D grass because of the amount of control you have over it. I don't really like lawn mode grass, you know. I like using a little bit of the wild grass or at least this sort of clean cut grass where at least there is a bit of variation in the different um, textures in the grass. 
and Lumion is one of my favorite rendering platform in order to actually do these things. So you can increase the grass size over here. You can begin to change the grass length, make the grass longer and the gravitational force. How much is the grass bending? You can change the color of it, of course, as well, make it lighter, darker, and you can click here on the RGB to get more variation in that case. Let's make it something like this. It's like a, a little rain pond. I say this works and I actually drew this model, the water dripping. Um, when I did this, I made this model a long time ago. This was actually before I discovered the feature where you can actually import water falling, which I'll, I'll show you how to do that shortly in just a minute. So you can have that right there. And let's let me actually show you that briefly how you do that. So if I hit check, I go on place objects and we're going to go to effects. We have to double click on it and under effects, we have this fountain effect. So you can actually have this, you know, this water falling thing, although you have to like edit it more in order to get the right effect. And this is jumping upwards. Of course, you would want to rotate it and make it so that it's going downwards. But that's just another option. You don't have to model that in place. But going back to materials, that's just we're not thinking too much about it, but we're going to create a quick entourage and Let's see, we can go on outdoors. Maybe this is a type of concrete pavement. I say something like this works decently. We have the sidewalk. We want something like an asphalt over here. Don't like the color too much, but it'll, it'll have to do. These are the solar panels I modeled in um, Rhino. Very simple, nothing complicated. You can see it a little bit better here model these solar panels, but it's, it's simple, but it gets the job done. Uh, we could specify the wooden material over here as well. Maybe this is a hmm, something like that. Or actually more like this, right? But this is uh, decent enough. Let's do this uh, outdoor porch and let's actually make it some sort of wooden planks. I want maybe like a white plank, something like that. Yeah, like that, that looks good. And now let's add some entourage. We're gonna hit check, we're done over here. We're gonna quickly put some trees together. And you wanna really populate around, this is a driveway, so I'm not gonna put anything here. That's supposed to be asphalt. Um, use different types of trees, of course. You don't want everything to look the same. It begins to look a little bit fake and we even have fine detail trees. If you're using Lumion 10 or later, I don't advise putting too many of these things because it could make your project relatively heavy. But let's say this is like a tree that the owner, homeowners planted. Let's actually move a little down. And uh, we wanna put some more trees over here. Let's have this area a little bit covered as well. And then go back to the select tab and let's I only want to move it horizontally, so let's shift it like that, All right? So we're going to add some shrubs here. It's going to begin to act a little bit like a guard, different plants. We're not going to overthink that too much, but let's have some plants here. We can also have some along here, along this walkway as well. I mean, there's always more you can do, but let's Quickly, we can add people to it, right? Have the person there, rotate that person like that. Maybe more people. And uh, just an FYI, as you're adding things to your uh, composition, try putting things in different layers. Uh, it makes it easier in case you wanna hide certain things, like have your people in one layer, have your furniture in one layer. I'm just doing this to just streamline the process, show you how you just quickly put some things together. Let's rotate that, yeah. And we can move her a little farther down. Oops. Let's uh, undo that and let's move her horizontally. And that looks good. Uh, the only thing I do want to begin to change also is the asphalt for here in the street. So let's go on outdoor asphalt. So now we have that. And we're gonna hit check to save the changes. 
and let's bring this here and let's say we can begin to use the live sync now to set our view because here we can also activate the camera on Rhino to begin to do that. And that's just a great way to get like a very specific type of view. So let's do something like this. That looks pretty good to me. And what we have to do, we have to just zoom in a bit and let's move the arrow key down. And let's actually turn this and let's orbit it this way slightly like that. And now all you have to do is go on snapshot, right? I mean, let's say we want this to be our snapshot or actually let's take another one and let's change the focal length a little bit. Let's say we want this to be a little bit more at eye level. You could change that just a bit and tweak that, point the camera more this way, right? And now we can enlarge this. And then let's pick a style. Let's say we want something a little realistic. Um, I just love the uh, precipitation effect. So let's go on FX. Let's add a little bit of weather, right? Mm, right here. A little bit of precipitation, like a sun shower. So not too heavy, you know, maybe a little, make the ground a little bit wet. Actually, I'll leave it like that. I'll just change the heading, so the position of the light. Maybe somewhere where we could begin to see a little bit here. We see a little bit of the reflection of that. Bump the exposure up just a bit. And we're not going to go in depth, really make this nice, but this is just a quick way to do it. Let's hit render and we're going to pick this. And the nice thing about Lumion, the renderings are just so fast. I put this together in like less than 10 minutes. It could look a lot better in my opinion, of course, but you know, imagine you spend a lot more time on this. So Lumion is just a fantastic program and you know, working between Lumion and Rhino is just very, very helpful. And it allowed me even to begin to get the right views that I want and import my model uh, seamlessly. And if I want to even, let's, hit, let's just hit okay. If I want to go back and I say, oh, I don't like this water over here, now I can just hit delete on, on, on that water, right? I can hit delete and I can re-render this, you know? Or if I don't like this roof over here, let's say I'm like, uh, you know, this is not working uh, too well for me, or let's say I don't like this solar panel, I can hit delete, and now I can re-render it just like that. And it's just so simple. I don't have to lose the position of my rendering. It's a really good tool to incorporate to help improve your workflow so that you're not wasting so much time importing, exporting, or if you need a particular view, you can use the views from the program that has orthographic views and embed it. Of course, now Lumion does have orthographic views, but if you're using a version of Lumion 10 and lower, this is something that's really crucial. And in general, live sync is just such a helpful tool to have. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Once again, you can just search live sync and you can download it. And I definitely recommend it because if you have the program, it's absolutely free. Let me know your thoughts in the comment below. Do you like live sync? What do you think can be improved about live sync? For me, it sometimes is a little bit glitchy. As you saw in the tutorial, it did not even go to my top view. This happens occasionally but sometimes it is a bit glitchy. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section as well below. So this is all for the video and I hope to see you all in the next one.